What? They don't look like it? I don't think they're supposed to be like that. Oh, the spine's good? That's that good grease. Yeah, the spine's still good. Hell yeah. Good thing the kit came with new axle seals. Almost got her torn down. It'll be fine. Yeah, shit. Can't see it from my house. Shit'll buff out. Me neither. I'll close my blinds. <laughs> Got everything torn down, and uh, that's pretty nasty. That's what happens when water gets in your oil. Vent tube, vent tube's hooked up. Oh uh, yeah, now we got to knock out these inner seals here and here. And then clean out the tubes from where spider gear failed. One or something that failed. Check that shit out. Ate the hell up. Good thing. I'm talking my boy into getting the USA standard. Spartan lunchbox front locker for the Dana 30. He'll be happy with that. I have the same setup in my Cherokee. And I got no complaints. I mean, it's a little loud at times, taking turns because it's trying to grab. Also, how it works when we're putting it together. But now it's just time to clean out these tubes, clean out the uh, oil canals for the pinion bearings and then we'll start tearing down the old carrier ring gear measure out all our shims and get to setting up for test fit and then final all right gonna knock out those seals on the dana 30 the inner seals uh, made my own tool for that to go through the axle tube took a socket took a bolt welded that bitch in there slide on your race driver i use the rinky dink harbor freight race drivers for stuff like this i have a nice set that i actually use for putting in the new races and stuff like that but anyways this guy is awesome. Use extensions to push through the axle tube and take your hammer, tap the end of it, and it pushes them out because the axle seals come from the inside, well, out, inside to inside of the differential to press them out, and then to press them back in, you go inside out. I, I think that makes sense. Uh, I'll try to show you in the video. <laughs> All right, so extensions. I know that looks freaking crazy, but I forgot to bring my long extension from the shop. Something else I forgot to come down here and show them. Come down here. So we'll go through the axle tube on this side. Push her through. Yes, she hits. <laughs> Get the hammer, and we'll tap on this end. Hell yeah. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Pull it back out. Golly, those are factory, dude. What year is this? 96. <laughs> so I told you, it's amazing this thing's held up.
Yep. Is that the only one? Yeah. That was it just... That's some high quality clay. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Other side. What the hell was that? Just squirrels. It'll be fine. Same thing on the other side. Alright, a bunch of shit's about to come out of this thing. I believe it. That seal's been fucked. Hey, look, look. They're filming, filming. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm gonna have to <laughs> hit it with a hammer all the way through. I <laughs> listen to it. It's solid, dude. <laughs> dude, so much shit's about to come out. <laughs> oh. Nah, it's a solid blood plug, dude. We got a doo doo falling out. Look. <laughs> dude, that looks disgusting. This oh is straight doo doo. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> hey, sit this. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We're gonna sit this on the ground, so. <laughs> Sorry, man, I had to take a shit. <laughs> dude, look at the consistency of that. <laughs> Your dog took a shit on the shop floor. <laughs> God, watch! I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell him that, and then I'm gonna pick it up and throw it at him. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting, dude. Shit, dude, that's years of shit. Is it still going? It's the mud helped push the seal out. Here, push it back through. Dude, that's crazy. There's metal in it. Oh, of course there is. That whole like end chunk oh, is yeah. metal. That's nasty. Jesus. All right. Now time to clean those suckers out. See if you can like look down in there. I'll try to show my light where it's not showing. Wow. Can you see it? <laughs> yeah. So this side actually wasn't as bad. I don't know if y'all can see that. Can you see down in there? Shine it through that way. It's not as bad. That, that, it's not this, as bad. This is like the typical what I see on Jeeps and off-road vehicles inside the tubes. But definitely this side, uh, pretty bad with the axle seal being bad and how, do you know how long that's been leaking long time <laughs> it's all good we're like long fix time we're gonna fix this shit <laughs> all right that's not sticking back because there's shit all over it i don't i don't know how i feel about the new style of these from snap-on i like that that pulls off though yeah so snap-on Makes these neck lights. I don't wear them on my neck. I usually wear a backwards hat so they sit right on my bill. But the style before, is this right here, which a lot lighter. And these just go up and down. And then you got one switch. You hold it down to dim it. And then a new style, Quite a bit heavier. Uh, instead of having just a one button for both the lights, they're each separate, charged separately, and they also pop off so you can stick them wherever you need to, which is kind of nice. But I will say that when you're working with them, not on your neck, not using, like they're supposed to sit like this. So, I mean, if you use it the proper way, then they're not as bad, but I like it like this. 
still hands free, but with them being heavy and kind of flop down, I could I could stick them like through my ears, using my <laughs> ears as like holders. There you go, three. No. And just do it like that. It's pretty legit. I snap on. I'm just saying, dude. You ear know, lights. Like ear lights, bro. Ear lights. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, got grease on this motherfucker. But uh, let's do this. Let's get it cleaned out. I gotta while he's cleaning up his axle tubes and the axle. I'm gonna be over here just assembling this. So on the older style Dana 30s, the pinion, instead of having a crush sleeve, and let me show you where's my box. So I keep everything, like I said earlier, I'm a pack rat, old shim, pinion shims. But anyways, on the new style, during the 30 pinions, you have a crush sleeve that sits here, and then you shim it uh, behind the bearing or behind the race that sits here inside the differential before you press it in. But anyways, on these old style ones, they, instead of using the crush sleeve, they shim here to compensate for backspacing and then also behind the bearing. A uh, little bit more difficult when it comes to doing your math and doing your shimming, uh, but not too bad. Uh, but I'll show you the math equation from where I start and like your average numbers. And I will say Yukon does in their booklets like give you really good instructions and like average setups comes with pictures all that but do not if you are not qualified to do this shit do not go into it thinking that it is easy I've done a lot of gears a lot of rebuilds on differentials to know what I know now. Uh, there's a lot when it comes to the shimming because you're shimming the carrier on the left side and the right side, that's the way it sits in the differential. You're shimming here and here to move the ring gear away or toward the pinion because the pinion will sit like this inside the differential. So when you're shimming the carrier, you're moving it, like I said, away or toward the pinion to get that proper contact pattern. And then you're also shimming the uh, pinion, mostly what you're focused on, and this is this point, because it's going to move your pinion when it sits inside of there, of course. You're going to shim your pinion in or out away from the carrier. But... This is the size comparison. So these, let's see, when you're trying to find out your gear ratio, a little trick, on most ring gears, you can see when you take off the cover, you'll have numbers on the side of the ring gear. Uh, this one, I don't know if you can see it in the video. I'll try to wipe it off. You'll have two numbers side by side. It'll be a double digit number, uh, both of them, most of the time. Uh, we have a 39 and 11. So what that means, there's 39 teeth on the ring gear and then 11 teeth on the pinion. And to get your ratio, you take your 11 and divide it into the 39 or whatever those numbers are. But the lower number is always gonna be your pinion teeth number and then the bigger number will be your ring gear teeth so if we divide that uh, I'll have to use my calculator because I can't do that shit in my fucking head but this should be a 355 ratio uh, for a stock XJ um, but we're going from 355 to 48 and to explain this the best way I can the reason why you do re-gears 
for off-road vehicles when you upgrade tire size and add all the extra weight with bumpers and everything like that is to help the drivetrain and the transmission transfer case all that to help it push all that extra weight and the bigger tires but to explain it the best way i can it's like a mountain bike when you're going up the going up a hill uh like you you move to that smaller sprocket so it's easier to pedal up the hill uh same thing for doing your gears and the gear ratio if you look at the, these pinions this is your factory one and then there's your new one so there's less, there's less revolution. yeah less revolution. exactly so less revolution to make a full rotation or no yeah, it was no solutions to travel a further distance. No, it when you yeah yeah yeah. When you re-gear here, you're getting more revolutions at your wheel, less revolutions at your axle. Yeah. But so also, I want to add um, anything 373 and below on these Dana 30s. Um, you have to change. The carriers due to the difference in deck heights to compensate for the shimming like I said before for the carrier here and on the other side bearing but you can see the deck height difference so let's see just a tad just a tad bit higher on this one but that will compensate for the gear ratio change. Because if we were to reuse this one, it's not recommended. I've seen it done. Um, but there is so much shimming going on on this side. On most occasions, you're not going to be able to shim it enough to get that ring gear close enough to the pinion where you need it to get the proper contact. Anyways, there's a rough rundown. So, best way to clean these out if you don't have a wire brush. Uh, I've made a wire brush type deal on a pipe um, to clean these seal, uh, axle tubes out. Uh, if you don't have anything like that or make something of that nature, uh, best bet is a rag. Push it through this end with an extension. Kind of just jam the rag through with some car cleaner, brake cleaner. But it's a good sign when you start pushing it through, and there's less and less, obviously, on the rag. But you want to get this cleaned out as much as possible. Just about there. When you're doing your gears and rebuilds, anything like that. You want to make sure your differential after torn down is completely cleaned out uh, like I said before very important to clean out these canals uh, any kind of debris uh, metal shavings can get stuck in there real easily uh, let's see you see where the canal runs through here and then there's one I don't know if you can see it right up there you can see the light coming through but you'll have an upper and a lower most of the time but very important to clean these out clean out where your races sit where the old bearings were all old debris so everything is nice and clean when you go in with your new parts now we got to clean out this one What are you using a knife on? Get down on there. Why are you worried about that section? Because I'm OCD. And I'm already in here, so why not? Whatever. Back to what I was doing.
two of each of these side spotter gears. Uh, this side, uh, this one. These two sit on the upper and lower, from side to side. And then this one will sit on the side right there. Try to get my hand out of the way. And then the other one over here. It, yeah, anyways. Uh, so the thrust washer sit back behind these. Two different sizes on the thrust washers, of course. You got this one for this one, this size. And then this one for the bigger one. And it sits here. Throw the washers off to reuse. Luckily, they're still in good shape, but the spotter gears, on the other hand, not okay. <laughs> That's what your teeth are supposed to look like. And this is what you call full send. Going off road. Hell yeah. Also, why I recommended the Spartan lunchbox locker. Now we're about to put this bad boy together.
sometimes you just gotta take a break. Let off some steam. Get far. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> 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 